The unemployment rate in New Mexico remains higher than the national average. Remote work is one opportunity to help people find jobs and stay in their community. But there are challenges, including learning how to manage customers by phone and getting the right internet connection to meet employer requirements. Producer Sarah Gustavus visited the Solo Works program in Cibola County this year for the State of Change project with the Solutions Journalism Network and our media partners across the state. Grants, New Mexico is home to about 9,000 people. The town experienced boom and bust periods from the 1950s through the 1980s. Uranium mining created high paying jobs, but those left when the mining stopped. Sarah Pena lived through that. She was born in Cubero and loves the area, but spent most of her career traveling long distances for a job. She once drove more than an hour each way to work at a hospital and later the prison in Los Lunas, just south of Albuquerque. My family and friends are here. My house is here. Uh, I am from here. I want to stay home. That's very important to me. I retired in 2010 because my granddaughter was born. They were looking for a babysitter and I could watch her. I could babysit for her. I worked until she started Head Start. And then she, she didn't need me anymore. That's what she told me. <laughs> but uh, I was staying at home after she started school. And there's only so much you can do, you know, clean house, me, me, read. But I don't watch that much television, but I crochet and I knit and started visiting family and I just started getting bored. Samuel Jack also grew up in the area. He worked in the restaurant industry for 20 years. He left New Mexico but came back. Injuries and health concerns led him to seek out work that's less physically taxing and unpredictable. In the restaurant business, the, the, um, the schedule is up and down. One day you're working in the morning, the next day you're working in the evening, one day you're working swing shift. That's, it's kind of hard when raising a family. The Solo Works program trains people like Sarah and Samuel to become remote workers. They might answer customer calls or transcribe audio. In the three-week program, they get resume help and guidance on how to transfer previous skills to remote work. They also practice typing and learn strategies for managing difficult calls with customers. Being on a phone or online, um, you, can't, you can't feel their body language, you can't see their body language. You have to kind of hear the body language now and hear in their tone of what they're trying to say. We left out the stuff about dancing. Right. <laughs> Inbound calls or outbound calls. Whatever's available and I can do. And I know I can do any of it because I was taught how to do it. Bringing in new jobs from outside New Mexico could have a significant economic impact beyond the workers' families. For Cibola County, we're challenged because um, the majority of our tax base um, is exempt in that three, two-thirds to three-quarters of our land is tribal, public, national parks, forests. So we don't have a tax base. We don't have a strong tax base. We see this remote work as an opportunity to expand the economic tax base by our remote workers working and securing employment with people who are out of state, bringing new money into the county to help expand that tax base. Unlike other economic development initiatives that bring in jobs or offer incentives to companies, SolarWorks is reimbursed by the state for each person who is trained and placed in a remote job. The first phase in grants started in 2017. Through the pilot, we came up with an estimated average of 3500 uh, to $5,000 per person uh, to be placed in a position. Once they go through the training, the research and application process, and then the placement process, that whole time frame, which can, can take up to three months, if not more. That can be a tough sell for lawmakers. Less than 50 people have been trained so far. Solo Works and Grants needs to train and place another 30 people in jobs by the end of June to receive funding set aside by the legislature for the program. Center Director Shelley Fawcett moved here earlier this year, and she's hopeful they can do it. I'm from a rural town in um, Utah that's very boomer bust, and so it was kind of close to my heart, the rural plight, so to speak. Fawcett is working to expand the center's list of potential work opportunities beyond answering calls or transcribing. I'm very interested in helping people getting into virtual assisting or virtual admin. Um, there are, I mean, I'm, I'm even collecting um, 
curriculum and trying to make connections as far as uh, audiobook narration, because why not? Because <laughs> there are people who are interested in that. And I mean, there's uh, medical billing and coding. There's, 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 there are a lot of things that you can do if you don't have to have the hardline phone connection. Fawcett helps trainees evaluate what's a legitimate job and what's a scam. She also says the adaptability of the program makes it possible to meet the needs of people with disabilities or caregiving responsibilities. And she's creating a community of remote workers who can mentor and advise new trainees. William Yarbrough went through the training and now works out of the center doing calls for a medical equipment company. I think it would have been a lot harder. Um, the Solo Works program does more than just the training, it's the support. Uh, they gave me a place to work. Um, the amenities here, I, I mean, I have. I know I can have some coffee when I get into work. Um, there's someone to talk to if I want to, especially if I want to advance into the job, if I'm not liking it or if I'm having issues with my, um, with my employer. A remote job is like any other job. There's potential, but hard work is required to land the right role. My grandson starts college pretty soon. He graduates this year. I have a money for, uh, and a fund for him and my other daughter, granddaughter, starting one for the baby. I can help them with school. I can make trips, can go buy a new van. Uh, just having extra money is nice. Not, not to be extravagant, but I put a new roof on my house. Um, I want to paint the outside. I would just want to do so many things that I can do if I have the extra money. This is not a lottery. This is an opportunity. <laughs> um, the opportunity is that you can have an opportunity to work at home. And it's here, it's right now. For New Mexico in Focus and the State of Change Project, I'm Sarah Gustavus.